Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be working in the foldable notes booklet for verifying trick identities. Um, and in this uh, next series of videos, we're going to verify trick identities first graphically and then algebraically. And to verify a trick identity means to prove that the equation is true by showing that both sides equal one another. So starting off with the graphical approach, we're going to graph the left side of the equation um, in y1, the right side of the equation in y2, and verify that the graphs coincide at every point um, that's in the domain. And if they do, that means it's an identity. If they don't have every point in common, if the graphs don't coincide, then it's not an identity. Okay, and uh, we're going to be using the TI-84 graphing calculator in um, this video to look at the graphs, but you're welcome to also use uh, either your TI-83, uh, GeoGebra, or Desmos. Any, any graphing technology that you have um, would be perfectly fine to use for this. Um, this assignment. So we're going to start with example one, verifying graphically, and in the calculator we're just going to do some setup here real quick. So because uh, we're going to graph these in radians, we just want to double check that our mode is in radian mode, and then we're also going to change our table settings uh, because normally the table is set to start at zero and increment in ones, one, two, three, four. But since we're doing radians um, and we're working from a unit circle for these uh, circular trig functions, we're going to change this. Instead of going in increments of one in the table, we're going to go in increments of pi over two because those are our quadrantal angles. So we're going to change this to a pi over two. Okay. Now, um, if you want more information, you could make it pi over fours um, to go around. But generally, for what we're doing, the pi over two is going to be uh, is going to be plenty. Okay. So let's go to our y one, and on the left, we're going to enter one divided by the cosine squared of x. So one divided by cosine. And you'll notice that the calculator puts that parentheses right there. Um, there's no way you can arrow in between, right? When you use your left and right arrows, it's not going to let you get in between the cosine function and that open parentheses to put a square. And remember that notation, that cosine squared x, is just there to remind us that we're squaring the entire cosine of x function. We're not just squaring the x. We're not taking the cosine of x squared. Right, we're squaring the function cosine of x. So to do that in the calculator, we're going to just close out our cosine of x function and then put the square. So this square belongs to the whole function. It's not just squaring the x because it's on the outside of the parentheses. Okay. Then in our y2, we're going to use parentheses around the numerator. So 1 minus cosine of the quantity 2x close the parentheses on the numerator, and divide by 2. Okay, so we've got the left side in y1, the right side in y2, and when you press zoom in um, our algebra graphs, we would always use zoom 6, zoom standard, to get a window going from negative 10 to 10. But since we're going to be in radians, graphing in radians, and we want um, our increments to be uh, the quadrantal angles, the pi over 2, um, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. We're going to go ahead and do number 7 here, this zoom trig. And that will automatically set our window um, so that each of these tick marks is a quadrantal angle. So this is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And then in the negative direction, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and then negative 2 pi. The y-axis is going by 1s, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's just the x-axis that has been modified to go um, by the quadrantal angles. So looking at this graph, we can see uh, that these don't appear to intersect at all. So we're going to go ahead and sketch this um, in the notes. So we have some U shapes here, and this is just a rough sketch, right? We're not trying to be super precise here. We just want to have a record of the shape of this 
and um, we want to make sure that we can tell that it's not intersecting anywhere. So I'm going to clean up that spot there where it looks like it is. There we go. Okay, and there's our rough sketch. So uh, when the graph first started, if we do it again, um, it starts with the left side because that was our Y1. So zoom seven. And that means that these U shapes um, up across here that are not touching the x-axis, that's our graph for 1 over cosine uh, squared of x. Then you'll notice the second one that appears, that's our y2, so that's the graph of 1 minus cosine of 2x, um, that all divided by 2. Now before we assume that these aren't intersecting, which it seems um, that they're not from the picture, let's go ahead and take a look at the table. So second graph brings up the table, and then we can just double check that for each of these different x values, we also have different y values, right? If none of those y values for y1 or y2 are in common, then that means they don't intersect, and it looks like they're all different, all these y values. So it's safe to say then that this is never true, and is it an identity then? No. Right. In order to be an identity, um, the graphs would have to coincide. Okay, so let's try the second example here. We'll clear out the y1 and the y2. And then in y1, we're going to enter the left side. So negative sine squared of x will be negative sine x. Close the parentheses on the sine of x. And then square on the outside of the parentheses. That's the negative sine squared of x. Then we press enter, and we're going to do parentheses around our numerator, so cosine of the quantity 2x minus 1, close parentheses on the numerator, and divide that quantity by 2. Okay, then zoom 7, and the first graph we see is the negative sine squared of x. And then notice in the corner here, these little uh, marks mean it's still running, but it doesn't look like anything changed, right? Now these marks stopped, so we know it's finished. Does that mean that the graph has all the same points? Are they coinciding? Or is it possible that maybe this right-hand side is out of the view of the window, right? Maybe it's up here um, at positive 10 and our graph only goes to 4. So how will we tell? We're going to look at the table and see if they have points in common. So as we look here at um, pi over 2, the X, uh, the x is pi over 2, the y1, that's our left-hand side, is equal to negative 1, the y2 also negative 1. So they coincide at those points. At pi, same thing, they coincide, um, they're both at 0. And as we look down the table, that uh, pattern is holding true throughout. So that tells us that they have all of their points in common, these graphs are coinciding. So we can go ahead and make our rough sketch. And then we can say that this is true for all x values, which means that, yes, it is an identity. So